Cyberpunk 2077. Cyberpunk 2077. Welcome to the Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk 20 to 77. The only Seven. Cyberpunk 2077 where you can Cyberpunk 2077. With us this week is Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk 2077. 2077. <laughs> uh, welcome to the 72 PC podcast. We all, um, well, we, all of us didn't, but me and Tom have been playing Cyberpunk and everybody's excited about it. So, yeah. Cyberpunk. What's up? Actually, it's going to be playing Rocket League. Red and Cyberpunk 2077. So I've actually been playing the tabletop version alongside regular old Cyberpunk 2077. Nice. So I watched a 2012 YouTube video of the original announcement of this game. <laughs> um, and he, they really called out a lot about the tabletop in that presentation. Yep. Also, something I feel a lot of people buried the lead on. This isn't the Witcher 3 team. This is the Witcher 2 team. Oh, huh? I didn't realize what? that. Okay. This is the team that made the Witcher 2, not the team that made the Witcher 3. I didn't realize those were different teams. Interesting. I didn't until then. Well, because it makes sense. If they were working on this back in 2012, oh, the, Witcher yeah, okay. was still, the Witcher 3 yeah, was still yeah, in the yeah. works. Hmm. Game development is long, dude. Yeah, Especially giant games yeah. like this. Yeah, and at that point, it was all concept art they were showing. Like, there wasn't even any in-game footage. They were still working out, like, storyboard kind of bullshit. Okay. But yeah, it it was an interesting watch. In the fun comment section, people are like, newsflash from the future, game's still not out. Like, six months ago. (laughs) That's funny. Oh, man. It's out now, though. It is. Yeah. Kind of. Amazingly enough. I, it's it's out. Should it have been out? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. fine. Uh, are are we just gonna do it? Yeah, let's, just, it, let's yeah. just let's just do it. Okay, so I'm sure I we'll get am, off track later. It's fine. We can yeah. we can dive back into it. I'm 15 hours in, 15 ish hours in. Gog reports that I've played about 21 hours, but the in-game clock is about 15 to 16 hours. Um, so definitely not approaching that 100 hour mark um and i've been doing a lot of side stuff so i haven't just concentrated on the main quest uh i like it so far i really do so bottom line it feels like deus ex uh human revolution and gta 4 got together and had a weird fucked up cyberpunky baby (laughs) um and honestly that's a good thing um i think it plays well enough uh, I do like it. I think it will get way, way better as time goes on. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, not bad. Definitely not bad. I do not feel ripped off, and uh, I'm going to be playing this for a while. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it too. Um, and this isn't even... like I, I bought this game... I wasn't hyped about this game like everybody else was, but I was curious. So I did buy it and decided to play it. And I think I've put... Steam says 11 hours in. So I'm a little behind you probably. Um, but I haven't really been doing a lot of side quest stuff. I've just been mainlining the main quest more or less. Uh, but no, I really like guys, it a lot. Did you guys put like 10 hours into customizing your junk? Um, no, you know, honestly, I'm pretty fucking disappointed with customize your junk. Like for <laughs> as, for as big of hype as they put into, Oh, you can customize your junk dog. It's amazing. Uh, no, you you really can't. You get two different styles of penises, two different <laughs> sizes, one vagina, and then just underwear. Just and that's like, that's it. Uh, Those are your flap. options. There's yeah, a nun like option. <laughs> so the nun is just underwear. Oh, like, okay. you don't. You I don't thought even, it was just like, skin. Yeah, it's you don't get to go. <laughs> you don't get to go full Ken doll. You just get <laughs> boxers or panties, and and those those are your options. Actually, the whole character customization thing is a lot less in depth than some some other RPGs I've played. Yeah, but it makes sense from the tone of the game, though. Like, mm. this is supposed to be some you know big giant. I don't want to say all the way serious because I'm sure. I mean, there's a little bit of comedy in it, but a fairly oh, I... serious <laughs> cyberpunk <laughs> game. Yeah, they don't want people with like weird. I don't know. Like people making joke characters with like a giant nose and no mouth and green skin and or purple skin and like I don't know. 
Yeah. So so the the character customization is okay. That's fine. You you can choose yeah. from different faces, preset faces and stuff. There's not like sliders for facial features and stuff like some of their games. I I am going to give it kudos though. Um I was afraid for a hot minute there that we would see like Mass Effect Andromeda levels of horrifying default characters. That is not the case. The default <laughs> yeah. characters look great. Um, so any any time I look at a character customization screen, I have to I have to try to make the most horrific looking thing I can imagine. Um, still, <laughs> nothing looks bad as the default Mass Effect Andromeda characters. So, still got That's that. Don't worry, EA. You're you're in first place there. Mm-hmm. But um, I, th- I think the game gets a lot of things right and some things ooh. wrong. Uh, what it gets right is presentation. Just oh, in general, man. everything to do with the presentation. It is probably, I mean, it's definitely the best looking game I've ever seen. For sure. It's beautiful. It's, it's fucking ridiculous. beautiful. And it runs better than I thought it would. Um, yeah. Um, I've got everything basically on Ultra uh, with RTX on and all the ray tracing shadows and lights and it's running smooth like pretty much 60 more or less it dips a little I, um, bit but uh yeah i i've noticed in a couple of spots like i i've actually got to isolate to a few spots in the city itself like geographic locations where if i'm driving through i'm gonna get some frame dips mm-hmm. and that's the worst i've seen as far as like performance issues now graphical issues what you are reading online is accurate this game is buggy as fuck uh it's not unplayably buggy though, right like it's not fallout 76 levels of buggy it's not even no man's sky levels of buggy it is perfectly playable but jesus you get thrown out of that experience way more than than you'd expect um so i've seen some funny ass things like I've we're seen, talking I've red seen a couple redemption of, levels oh yeah. i've seen a couple of t poses um Oh, man. I've seen. I, am... I saw Keanu Reeves put out his cigarette, but then the cigarette was just floating in front of him, <laughs> <laughs> and he was just like acting like that wasn't happening. Um, and then I've I've seen people like there was a car chase scene, and the dude in the car was just like T posed, but like sticking out of the top of the roof yeah. of the car. <laughs> I have seen that. I've personally yeah. seen that. Um, but um, I mean, twenty seventy seven. Yeah. Um, yeah. but I haven't. I mean, that's about it. Like those things happen occasionally, things like that, but it's not, I mean, it's nothing game breaking. I had one bug where I couldn't progress a quest and it's because it was asking me to talk to somebody. And then when I talked to them, it just didn't do anything. Mm. So all I had to do is reload my save and I was already right there. I just talked to the guy, talked to the guy again and it fixed it. So I haven't had anything where, you know, it breaks your save and you have to play through a bunch of stuff again. So let me, um, I'm I'm totally not going to get stored on here. Pausing and looking at notes and opening this up. There we go. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> uh, what I've seen in the game, and that totally wasn't my fault for not playing that. <laughs> um, what I've seen is uh, there's a lot of audio issues. Um, a yeah, lot. Of I do audio have issues. some of those. So um, sometimes combat music will start playing, even though somebody's trying to talk to you or give you a quest, or you've left your car or driven out of the area, and the combat music just doesn't stop until like time's out after a minute or two which is kind of infuriating when you're trying to get like quest specific information out of somebody in your car and it just doesn't fucking happen um there's there's a lot of bad mixing where sometimes um the soundtrack or other audio cues will play over characters trying to say something and you can tell it's not intentional Mm -hmm. um so it's not like an artifact of the world it's just really fucking bad mixing uh and then yeah. i had a, a really infuriating bug where there was one particular character near the start of the game where every time they had started to say something probably two to four seconds before that one voice clip finished the next one would start so you'd get a person talking and before they finish, then they start talking over themselves <laughs> except there's actual overlap so you hear two of the person oh. speaking at the same time oh i haven't had that one That'd it be was awful. it was bad. Now it just I've just seen that once, but it was like a core at the beginning. You can't proceed the game unless you talk to this person. Issue. So it's not like I had the option of walking away and trying again. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, let's see. I'm trying to go through my list here. Yeah, lots Ron, of posing, lots of texture posing. You're what, Earth? Oh, so I'm glad you guys aren't giving the game breaking bugs, but I do want to call it. There are people reporting that they are seeing some. Um, oh, I that's... definitely had a lot of bugs where I could not proceed with a quest or a mission. Um, I probably encounter those four to five times per session. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, okay. Never mind. You are getting some. Yeah, I'm action. getting a lot of them. So the most common thing is where I am quick hacking and I, I open up the scan menu. And it's got a cool, like, little visual overlay that lets you know, hey, you're scanning for hackable targets. And then a quest will end, or somebody will talk to me, or there's an interruption of some kind. And then I'm just stuck in scan mode. So I can't talk to anybody. I can't pick up any items. I can't shoot anything. I'm just stuck in scan mode. So I've had to, you know, exit and reload my game, sometimes losing up to 10 minutes of progress because that got stuck which is pretty annoying. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's definitely happening. Game-breaking bugs, quest-breaking bugs do happen. And they're not rare. They're not rare at all. Yeah, okay. That, that's what I was wanting to make sure was stressed. Like, I'm not trying to say it's, like, awful and it's everywhere, but it is something frequently reported by the, people. This game is buggy as shit. Frankly, it's it came out six months too early. Um... I do think it's playable. It's really good, but it's playable for sure. I'm I'm looking forward to playing through this again here in about six months when they've got everything figured out. Um, That'll be about when I get the game. <laughs> uh, yeah, one of the one this of the things that isn't that isn't really a bug. Um, it's just bad. Is the AI in a lot of places? Um, so like even even in Skyrim or Oblivion or Morrowind. If you try to steal something, if you try to take something out of a person's house, they get kind of mad at you, which is so weird. You're stealing from them and they get mad at you. What the hell? Mm -hmm. Um, But in (laughs) Cyberpunk 2077, you can walk into some dude's house or into uh, a store or a nightclub and anything that's not fucking nailed down. You just walk up and take it and no one bats a goddamn eye. <laughs> um, really? actually, yeah. Like when I first started playing the game, I'm like, Oh wait, this is, this is this guy. He's been giving me quests. I'm working with him. Yeah. He's got like a pile of 200 bucks sitting on his desk here, but I'm not going to steal from him. And it was like more of a role-playing thing with like kind of the understanding that, yeah, if you steal from people, there's going to be consequences. No, I, I learned that there's none. There's literally no consequences. You could just fucking take anything that's not nailed down and no one gives a shit. Um, that sucks. Yeah, it's it's pretty, pretty fucking annoying. Because um, it does break your immersion when you're like, oh, hey, here's this shopkeeper that's got like 200 bucks sitting down on the counter. Uh, I'm just going to take that. Thanks, you didn't need it, right? Um, it's It's been great. Um... I've seen a lot of entity spawning issues where some characters, like I literally walked into this place and every single character in the building was standing on top of one table. (laughs) What? (laughs) Inside of each other. Inside of each other. Like they all couldn't figure out where to spawn. So they all spawned at the exact same, like X, Y, Z location. Yeah. Everything spawns zero, zero. We didn't didn't transform. That's awesome. (laughs) I've seen that with items too. So there was a gun that is clearly placed. Like it's got a name. It's an iconic item. And it was clearly placed at a location. So the player could go pick it up during this quest. Except there were two of them. Literally on top of each other. Like I grabbed one. I'm like, oh, that's weird. Did I not grab that gun? Because it didn't disappear. I look at my inventory. Now I picked up two of the exact same fucking item in the exact same fucking location. Um, that was nice. I got like, I got some extra money out of it. Cool. Um, <laughs> you guys are having I, way more bugs than I have though, for sure. I, I'm like I've glad seen it's not a lot of little universal. graphical and audio bugs and stuff, but it's not, I'm not nearly getting some of that stuff. There's, there's some general design that I would like to see fixed up. Like mm. C should not be the key to, yes, I was going to bring that up. Fucking dialogue. Oh my God. So what? I'm crouching around, I'm sneaking and I'm like, okay, this is perfect. I kill the last guy. And then somebody gets on the phone with me and they're like, Hey V thanks for clearing out the guys over at this place. And like, I'm trying to uncrouch so I can walk around, like, not like a fucking idiot. 
except I skip half the conversation because I keep jamming C to uncrouch and oh wait, that's that's the skip thing. Then and, and I'm uh, now I'm skipping. And, that's okay. awful. It's it's bad. And then it happens again. So the F key is to pick up items and to select dialogue options and to grab enemies from behind. So sometimes you'll be on a phone call and you're trying to select an option and instead you're picking up stuff, which would matter if the AI cared at all what you were picking up, but it doesn't. So that's not really impactful. What Maybe is that's impactful? why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is impactful though is when you're standing behind an enemy, you're getting ready to grab him and strangle the fuck out of him, and instead, you, you grab the ammo from the container he's standing next to, and then he turns around, and he's like, oh, hey, I see you there, and you're like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> um, so yeah, that's annoying. Again, nothing a quick load can't fix, but Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like, all of this was found within my first, like, couple hours, and you gotta... You gotta say that, you know, CDPR knows that these things are bugs. Mm -hmm. It's not like this was a surprise to anyone. The game is buggy as fuck. Well, I mean, that is a surprise, I think, to a lot of people, including me. Like, I did not expect to be hearing about this many bugs. It's... Especially on a game that was already delayed. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's... I mean, clearly... let's not act like this game was pushed to meet its initial deadline. Yeah. It is, it is definitely, definitely buggy. Um, driving feels weird a lot of the time. It feels like Grand Theft Auto 4, which, by the way, that's yeah. not a compliment. It, it really feels... Driving. It's, it's a little stickier. I dare to call it more realistic than GTA 5 or, or Vice City, but it's not that's, fun. It's... It's more, it's like there's input lag on all the steering is what it feels like to me. Exactly. Like a really slow and sluggish, but then it's also easy to oversteer and spin out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've had a lot of physics bugs. So there was one enemy where I was conveniently able to get a lot of headshots on him. And by the way, I'm playing on hard. I was able to get uh, a lot of headshots on him because when the dude was standing, there was like a little incline like a piece of stairs and when he was standing he was standing at a 45 fucking degree angle with his head sticking out from behind cover and you could tell he's trying to crouch but he's crouched like turned sideways so i was just plugging away until he fell over and then i did the same thing while driving apparently my car just went completely sideways when i was up on a curb um that was fucking weird uh, it's oh and and all remote play is broken so you can't play on steam in home streaming you can't play on parsec the way they're hooking into the mouse and keyboard is breaking stuff for a lot of people uh including people that use steam as kind of their um accessibility like controller remapping they're not able to do that uh so cdpr is aware of that they're working on it but uh, yeah now okay the good stuff the good stuff um the writing is solid uh, the text is not. There's typos everywhere. If you have subtitles turned on, you're going to find typos. All I have it. Really? <laughs> fucking over the place. All over the place. Um, I, I, was, I was expecting one to two because I've occasionally found stuff that needs to be fixed in game subtitles. But this is, they're fucking everywhere. Uh, it's kind of appalling. Mm -hmm. Like at, at one point, like just running the damn thing through spell check would have caught about half of them that I've seen. <laughs> um. um. Yeah. So, I mean, I've gotten used to the driving, so it doesn't really bother me that much. But if there was, like, GTA-style heavily, like, driving-focused missions, that might be a little weird. Um, but I haven't had any of those yet. And the only other thing that I didn't love about the game so far is the um, the combat feels fine. But, like, the actual movement and shooting mechanics are just a little... Uh, I don't know how to put it. I mean, it feels like, I guess, any shooting-focused RPG, it's, like, kind of stiff, I guess. It feels like, like the Deus movement. Ex. Yeah. It's it's not great. Not, like, Deus Ex not, didn't have like, fantastic... Not, like, awful. It's not awful. I'm still enjoying the gameplay yeah. itself, but, you know, coming from playing mostly a shooter, which is very much focused on movement and shooting <sighs> mechanics, 
Um, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> coming from something like Tarkov, you're going to notice that the, the the first person shooting aspect of the game is pretty uh, light. You know, that's not the focus, right? It's yeah. it's an RPG game. Mm-hmm. Um, now, so Speaking we've been of, talking a lot about all of the little things wrong with the game, which I think is important to talk about because anybody that's looking to buy it, I mean, you you want to know these things going into it. But it sounds like we're just like hating the game, but I actually really, really like it so far. There's like, despite all of right. the things that aren't perfect and all the bugs and stuff, like the actual core experience is really good. And like I said, the presentation is just beyond awesome. Night as City as, is amazing. It's the perfect so it's the perfect game to showcase ray tracing because literally everything is glowing. Always. <laughs> <laughs> All day or night time. it doesn't even matter but uh, especially at night when it's rainy and you can see all the like the streets are wet from the rain and everything's reflecting yeah. it's just it's really really nice <clears throat> and um also hats off to once again i think i described this a little bit when i was talking about control a handful of podcasts back but the dlss feature is absolutely just revolutionized revolution well blah, 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 words revolutionary um, yeah gotcha. it's revolutionary it's really really crazy how much of a difference that makes i mean i yeah. can, when i turn off dlss with my settings as they are now the game turns into 30 fps or you know maybe 30 fps max i turn it on and i'm getting like a pretty solid 60 maybe dips down into 40 occasionally on on like really small areas but i mean it, it runs great and it looks great and that, that technology is just crazy because, I mean, it, it looks good. Like, there there's never been a time where something that makes the performance that drastically better that doesn't affect the visuals. Ooh. It's nuts. Um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to give one more, one more little piece of hate. Dev, developers everywhere. Listen. Motion blur sucks, okay? I don't care if it looks more realistic. I don't care if it's pretty. It sucks, man. And like, if you I turn like it on blur. by default, fuck motion blur. Fuck all motion blur. <laughs> like, I've, I've never turned on motion blur and said, wow, this really makes my experience so much better. Huh. It's yeah. awful. It's just, I don't, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Fucking terrible. All right. So um, I, I want to get on this before I forget. So yeah. you were talking about the shooting aspect and Burr brought up a question and I think yeah. it's something that I think can highlight a cool thing about the game. Yeah. What's y'all's mm-hmm. builds? Like you don't have to play this game strictly like as a shooter no. or something like that. No. Yeah. So what are you guys doing for builds and explain what that means? Uh, I'm doing um, a body cool build. So what that means is most of my abilities are going to focus on... Um, shooting taking dam or tanking damage um and being a cool dude that can talk to people and sneak around so like if i get caught in stealth where i'm not super effective i can still wreck the shit out of people just by punching them to death or shooting them in the face Mm -hmm. um but if i do sneak around i can usually sneak around and uh Sometimes, occasionally, I've been able to even get out of entire quest lines by just being like, "Hey guys, uh, what's up? I'm here for this thing. You wanna you wanna cut a deal?" And they're like, "Yeah, I guess." <laughs> so, which um, nice. which which backstory did you go with? Street kid. Nice. Of course, I went with okay. street kid. <laughs> Renee, Renee gonna... tried uh, tried corpo, and she yeah. hated it so much. She had a lackey. Like, hey, uh, hey, boss, I got you those reports, and she's just like, nah. No, I can't go back to work. I went corpo. Okay. I went corporate swine. <laughs> and there nice. are a lot. I, I mean, the dialogue options have kind of come in handy, like dealing with people yeah, they and do. stuff. Okay. Explain this backstory stuff, because this is someplace <clears throat> I'm actually pretty um, ignorant the, on. So the prologue of the game can go one yep. of three ways, depending on what you choose as your backstory. So you get to play a little bit of that backstory, and then you get in you. You finish the prologue and then you start the game the same as you would any other time. But depending on your backstory, you get different um, like dialogue options in, in certain mm-hmm. spots. So because I'm a street kid, when I was talking to a, uh, a future cyber drug dealer, 
Um, he was just like, yeah, I got what you need. And I'm just like, cool, man. You got like this black lace stuff. And he's just like, oh, you want the good stuff. Here you go. And I'm going to give you a discount since you know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, like it was, it was pretty cool. Or knowing people and having connections on the street from the start. Like that was, that was kind of a neat part of the game. Um, yeah, kind of Corpos so come in handy options. because there were a couple of quests where we're dealing with large corporations mm. and where they try to kind of trick you with something and your dude is like basically, no, listen, man, I know how the corp- Corpo world works. That's <laughs> not going to work. Um, you know, you're bluffing kind of thing. And my so build is... Corp- huh? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, my build is... I'm focusing a lot on just pistols and just like critical hits and stuff. So I'm trying to do a lot of pistol headshots. I use an assault rifle or whatever if I have them, but I'm doing mostly pistols and mostly focusing on, uh, what are the attributes? <clears throat> I'm doing a lot of cool intelli- intelligence. And tech. Yeah. I'm doing a lot of intelligence and then whatever the one is for, uh, like just gun ability. Hmm. So the hacking stuff is kind of cool, <laughs> but I, it's a little I'm confusing not, and could be tutorialized better, I think. Yeah. Um, so I'm not really focusing that much on the hacking stuff. I'm just like kind of stealthy until I get spotted and then I'm good with guns after that. That's yeah. basically how I'm playing it. I um I do like how I, nothing ever feels hopeless. It has this Metal Gear Solid feeling to stealth where... It's best effort. You're trying to be sneaky. And if you are really good at being sneaky, you can pull off some insane shit. But hey, if you get caught, you can blast your way out. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I, I do like, and again, I'm playing on hard, so maybe it's not universal. I love how I feel substantially weaker than the people in Night City. Like uh, early on in the game, like literally when I was driving for the first time, there's two groups of people shooting at each other. And I was like, oh, fuck yeah, I'm going to pick a winner and I'm just going to blast everybody on the other side. No, I got my fucking shit wrecked. I should have stayed out of that fight. I chose not to. I paid the consequences. And having a game not treat me like some sort of mythical badass is actually kind of cool. It got me more involved in the world and uh, it, it felt good to yeah. to be, you know, weaker than everybody I'm, else. It's kind of weird. Normie. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, you're playing Skyrim. Oh, you're the Dragonborn. And no matter where you go, you can generally kick people's ass if you're stealthy and have a halfway decent bow. But in Cyberpunk, nah. Like, even even if you're super stealthy, you're not going to kick everybody's ass. It's actually really hard to just one-shot a bunch of stuff. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of nice. Um, the gigs are cool. You're doing a lot of different stuff. Uh, you can clearly see how the missions are set up for different play styles. Like, uh, my character definitely has the ability to walk in the front door and just blast everyone down. Um, I needed to steal a van, but I thought, okay, let's sneak around. Let's try to do this smart. I ended up tagging everybody, hijacking the cameras, using those as an extension of my hacking abilities, tagging all of them. And then I went around and picked off people one by one after viewing the patrols and the cameras, setting up a plan of attack and then executing it. And I saw right when I was about to leave, oh, there's guards outside. If I open this garage door and walk out, they're going to see me calling reinforcements. So I'm going to have to drive and get away. So instead, I went up onto the roof, dropped down on the other side of this building, and then fucked everybody up stealthily. And literally, I didn't complete the last half of the mission because I just drove home. That was it. (laughs) I completely avoided this entire scenario by just (laughs) looking forward, making a plan, executing it, and driving the fuck away. Uh, it was it was pretty cool because it, it made you feel like a 12 out of 10 thinking guy. And it's like, yeah, I got this. I'm going to do this thing and that thing and this result. And it's it's been great. Um, Eric, you started to I ask do... a little bit about the backstory stuff. Um, you can choose between Corpo, um, Street Kid, or Nomad. So no- Nomad is kind of like a like Mad Max style looking car that you get and then it, it also um the backstory also gives you different outfits to start off with so like if you're corpo you have like the suit and if you're a street kid you got the leather jacket and mm. okay all that. also um about the cars 
did they just take the cars out of Vice City? Because I swear to yeah, God, everything basically. looks like it's straight out of Vice City that I've seen well, so that's, far. Car really? The, the I think they all look more <laughs> cyberpunk futuristic. The the game actually kind of, <laughs> I I get like every once in a while I'm playing and I get like the Fifth Element vibes from from Night City a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Fifth Element like with the cars and stuff. I think because cyberpunk like as a concept was really really grew up in the 80s and a mm-hmm. little bit of the the early 90s. I think all of the cars are going to have that 80s vibe to them. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I agree with you. This looks like playing Cyberpunk 2077 is like playing a uh I scored that. Um Playing Cyberpunk 2077 is like having a uh, a playable version of the cover art to a synthwave album. Pretty much, yeah. It's the huh. 80s version of the future is all it is. Yeah. What people thought the future would be in the 80s. Um, so yeah, if if you wanted a playable Blade Runner, yeah, that kind of kind of a playable Blade Runner. Um, let's see. Try to, I'm looking down my list to make sure that I'm not missing anything. There's I a lot of like just random stuff selection. to do. <laughs> yeah. The the weapon selection is pretty cool. And um, you know, like in most games, when you get a really badass gun and you want to keep it forever, except, hey, it's like a level three pistol. It's, it's not going to survive your first hour of play. Um, they have these guns that are called iconic guns which basically means this is a unique model. It's got unique properties in the world. And it does follow a pretty linear level progression, except when it comes to crafting. You can actually craft these and keep these weapons up through the entirety of your playthrough. So if you want to gather the resources and uh, and make sure that the gun you found one hour into the game becomes like your favorite gun of all time that you l- use up until the end game, you can do that. Uh, it's pretty cool and a, a really nice way to let people uh, find their favorites in the world and stick with them. Yeah, That's I like cool. that a lot. And, uh, you know, for anything you're not going to upgrade, you don't have to throw it away. You've got a stash. So just swing by your apartment or put it in the trunk and you're done. Well, what's the benefit of not selling it? Um, Nothing. If you're nothing. a completist, you can complete but for any item, you can either sell it to any generic vendor, uh, or you can disassemble it and get crafting components. Uh, Chris is wanting to know how much you guys have been crafting. Absolutely none. A little bit. <laughs> uh, I haven't been building new, but I've been upgrading a lot because I uh, I took the perk that allows me to instantly disassemble any junk items. So the world is littered with a bunch of random shit. Like, oh, hey, there's a pack of playing cards on the ground. There's like... Mm-hmm. Fucking playing cards everywhere. Apparently, poker is the game of the future. Um, but anytime now I pick up a pack of cards, I get like four or five little like common junk item doodads that I can use to upgrade guns or. Um, so it's it's kind of nice. Um, it's a little disappointing because I can no longer sell junk items, so I can't like get a yeah. large pile of random shit and sell it. But I always have crafting components available, so. Because I'm not much of an RPG guy, I I'm basically playing the game like a linear action <laughs> game, where I get to have a little bit more agency in choosing what I want to do, and then also having a lot of downtime where I can just explore the city and do whatever I want in between story missions. So like a- any game with a lot of systems in it, I generally um, just don't really want to learn everything. <laughs> so <laughs> I have a tendency to just you know, focus on, on combat and like, like the Witcher games, if I were to play them a bunch, like, I know you're supposed to like get your sword ready with the oils and craft potions for the specific monster you're going to be hunting and all kinds of stuff. And really, I just want to upgrade my guy so that I can hit a, and it does enough damage where I can just fight things without having to worry about all that. So I kind of have a tendency to play games that way with a lot of systems in them. Um, So I haven't even touched the crafting at all. Like, I don't even know how it works. Or what the I love is. the systems. I love craft. I, I I enjoy crafting games though, so that also goes into my love of that. Mm-hmm. I I don't know if I'm looking forward to the the end game of this. Like I'm looking forward to the story content, but frankly, most of the skill tree is pretty boring. It's just flat stat line upgrades. Like, hey, 
if you put points into this, you don't get a really neat, unique ability, except in like these three cases. Instead, yeah. you're going to get plus 6% to critical headshot per or chance, plus 10% damage to this style of weapon. Um, I, and I, it, I don't know if this is really something they can patch without substantially changing the, the game they just put out, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I wish, I wish the skill tree were less boring than it is. It doesn't, That's it certainly fair, doesn't feel like something like Borderlands uh, or even even Skyrim, which some of the abilities are cool and really broken and overpowered. Um, that's kind of what I wanted out of Cyberpunk, but this is a pretty generic, all things said. Um, in, a, in a game, you would have expected more of these super niche kind of power-ups. Yeah. Now, I, I will say my favorite part in the game bar none absolutely is the writing cd project red is good at this they've had a lot of practice at it and mm. i i'm not going to spoil anything but there was a really humorous moment uh interacting with a car that i did not see coming um it, is kit in the game no sort of at least okay. not, not <laughs> that i know of right now um but yeah it was uh it was pretty fantastic um I, I really what, I need to talk was to it other the, people. Was it right before the? Um, does your car get damaged in the process of this encounter? No. Okay. It's not that one. I know think. that's I know that one. It's something you do with an individual in that mission after, or a, a further mission in that line. I should say. Hmm. I don't know what uh, you're talking about exactly. Yeah, I know, but, I by know, the way, is there is there any way you could tell me how far into the main storyline you are without spoiling it for people listening? Uh, act two. Okay, we're about at the same spot then. Yeah, I I'm uh, like two missions into Act two, I think. Yep. All right. Okay. Okay. So Dobby Dobby has seen the car interaction uh, uh, interaction at the start of Act two. Yeah. So. One of those, one of those vehicles in particular, was just fucking hilarious, and not at all what I saw coming. And yeah, there's there's like a, a cameo. I'm I'm just gonna say that that was fantastic. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's good. I'm really enjoying my time with Cyberpunk. I think it's going to be a much better game in six months. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the DLC because you know it's coming. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna be first in line. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll just wait for the game of the year edition where I get that DLC and everything for sixty. Um, I think CD. So it's going to be interesting to see what CDPR does with the DLC because I know the first couple that they put out are going to be. Free. Well, that's always. I actually always appreciate that because typically I, the the first couple of DLCs in traditional development fashion are already kind of under works while the game's shipping. Yeah, exactly. Um, so. So they're like they're gonna do they're gonna play this like they played The Witcher Three, which is the first couple of DLCs were free, and then the ones that win Game of the Year will be available for like fifteen bucks. Okay. Uh, Proto Tricks yeah. is saying everybody gets the DLC. So yeah. uh, do we yeah. see the three seashells reference? No, I didn't. I did I didn't not see, see that. it. No. Three seashells. Um, Have you ever reference? seen Demolition Man? <laughs> Uh, yes, but only once and oh, okay. May have only I need to rewatch that movie because I do remember liking it a lot and I remember Ooh. some stuff from it and that's one of them, but I haven't seen it. In a that's while. the one with like Mr. Glass and all that, right? No, 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 it's totally different. Uh, genre. Sylvester Stallone gets transported into the future to help the cops oh, or something. Nope, nope, nope. I have not seen that. Okay, yeah, it's a classic, at least classic for 80s sci fi. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's literally the only thing I've been playing is just cyberpunk all week long. Um, oh, okay. I, <laughs> so far, so far, I uh, I really like the the brain dance mechanic, even though I've only seen it used once. Um, mm -hmm. Now. The brain dance animation we're going to talk about when we get to our news segment. Because um, there's there's a little bit of controversy around that. Just just Is a little bit. Is it the flaw? Hmm? Is it flossing? 
No. No, I was awesome. joking. You said, you said a dance animation. That's insane. Brain dance brain is the... Oh, okay. Brain dance. <laughs> brain dance is like uh, my next VR obsession. It's going to be oh. figuring out how to plug my brain into other recorded brain memories and not wear a headset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Odd. Okay. Odd. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's a thing. Don't worry about it. So, uh, you guys have any other parting shots you want to get out there on Cyberpunk? Uh, no, I'm 15 hours in. I'm enjoying it. And um, I think if you're looking forward to this game, it did indeed come out. It's not just uh, <laughs> three Keanu's in a trench coat. It's it's actually a video game. A buggy video game, but it's a video game. Yeah. It's, it's... Do you think they deliver on the hype? Or do you think it's good in spite of not living up to the hype? I So... I, I didn't follow the hype that much. It was for me. Like I know everybody was really hyped, but I don't know. Like I don't really know what their marketing was early on. All the features they announced early on. Um, I only know of the hype because of just seeing it on social media and stuff. So, I mean, that's kind of a personal thing. How much did you hype it up yourself? <laughs> you know, True. if you think it's going to be the best thing you've ever seen in your entire life and it's going to change <clears throat> gaming forever, um, maybe not. But yeah. it is absolutely an excellent game with, you know, some really, really cool stuff in it. Um, I, I, I would say it actually hit the hype. It, it hit the bar that I think I had realistic expectations for. Um, I, I knew it wasn't going to be everything that I wanted it to be, but I thought it was going to be Deus Ex meets GTA. Is what I was hoping for. And it turns mm -hmm. out, yeah, that's what I'm getting most of the time. With like a like just seasoned with Bethesda esque bugginess. <laughs> and that's the game. Yeah. Dude, okay, I gotta say that's... I think the amount of bugs that we've discussed, this actually surpasses most common no, Bethesda levels. No, not in the least. In in Bethesda games, I have had quest givers spawn on top of buildings that I cannot physically reach that I had to craft stairs to get on top of. And that is still in the game. It was never fixed. Like Yes, but that, you're, you're giving it, one anecdotal. Like, you were just yeah. laying on the bugs. Oh, if, if I was... And these are all of the bugs I've seen in Cyberpunk 2077 so far. If we're going to talk about all of the bugs I've seen in any Bethesda game that I've played, we'd need a whole nother episode. <laughs> Like, I, I can't right. mention the minor Bethesda bugs because they are innumerable. Yeah, I mean, there's been some bugs, but yeah. I, I mean, my, my overall take of the game is that I went into it with basically no expectations just to check it out to see what it, all the hype is about. As a guy whose prime, you know, genre of video games don't usually include this type of game. And the fact that I'm 11 hours in and not even getting slightly bored and really wanting to see where they go with it is, you know, kind of a test to what the quality of the game overall. You yeah. and I don't have a ton of time to play super lengthy games. Like you and I have talked at length about, oh, thank God, this game is only three hours long. Maybe I'll actually check it out. Um, and this is, well, this is not a three hour experience. I definitely have the time to play lengthy games. I don't have the attention span to play lengthy <laughs> games is my All issue. Right. That's fair. So, but yeah, the fact that I've played 11 hours of it and I don't see myself slowing down anytime soon is definitely a plus in, in a, in a genre that I don't normally care about. Mm. <laughs> Except for Saints Row. Yeah, that was oh, that was fun with friends. Perfect. Yeah, but I wouldn't want to play it again. I'm, I not, hope, I'm I, not really big on GTAs. Um, I couldn't get into The Witcher Three that much. I tried. I liked Skyrim at the time, but I think my gaming taste has changed a lot since then. Yeah, as it does. Yeah, like I don't play anything like I used to. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't say anything, but a lot of. I mean, but, I I, uh, I never liked online competitive games that much, and here we are playing <laughs> the the game I played more than any other game ever. Uh, we're playing right now competitively online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not quite competitive, but yeah, it's technically because... competitive because we just won that match, and we could have lost that match. 
Yeah, see, we won. All right, touche, touche. <laughs> um, but yeah. Oh, I actually, Adam, yeah. I have one more thing on Cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking of the soundtrack so far? There was a... So the first car chase part. Um, so you get to the scene and then it does the usual thing when you're, when you learn a new mechanic, it, it pops up with a tutorial, you know, the music's playing and it's just saying, you know, Hey, on this kind of section, you hit these buttons to do this thing. And I just sat there jamming out to the music for like a minute and a half before I even touched <laughs> the button to keep going. Nice. Yeah, that the, was my takeaway as well. It's, <laughs> it's fucking great. The, all of the sound and, and sound design and music is absolutely amazing, I think. It's it's the perfect soundtrack. And and the radio I, stations are kind of cool, too. Um, there's a variety of music you can listen to in the cars while you drive around. But like just the actual OST itself is really, really, really good. Mm. It's got... It feels very Carpenter Brute to me. Like, very modern synthwave most places which i guess makes sense because like this is synthwave the game <laughs> yeah i mean it's not um it's more uh how do i put it it, it most of the soundtrack s seems more soundtracky than like a synthwave album is right it's more cinematic that's true it's yeah. composed more like you know it could have been an orchestral piece but instead they're using all these beautiful synths and stuff uh, kind of like the uh, like the Tron Legacy soundtrack. Yeah. And, you know, like the Blade Runner soundtrack. Something like that. Maybe a little All less right. orchestral than Tron, but... Yeah. All right. There With that, um, I think we're going to put the Cyberpunk um, topic to bed this week. No, we're since not. Tom, I want it for VR, damn it. Since I Tom just want it for it. VR. Since Tom was playing it all week. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to let you live that down that you said you were playing that okay, all week. Okay, okay. I've been playing it since it launched. I took but, a day um, off of work just to sit here and play this game. <laughs> I haven't done that in a while. Yeah, yeah it's either. great. I liked it. It was worth it. Last game I did that with was No Man's Sky, I think. Hmm. So, yeah, it's been a while. But, yeah. Um, I actually did play a new game. Um, one that I didn't buy, but was given to me by Tom. Um, ah. I finally got got into Hades. Hades. Um, what do you think? Yeah. That's that's pretty solid. It's it caught me off guard a little bit. Um, when I was going into a roguelite, and I knew there was a lot of combat. I expected something more. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what kind of genre thing to consider it. But um, like Isaac E, um, different items to pick up for better synergies and stuff. Where there's not a whole lot of synergies, I'm noticing in um, in uh, <clears throat> Hades. Like you upgrade your abilities, you get like more damage, or maybe this thing happens when you do it. But there's not this huge synergy that builds off of all the different shit you get. That said, I finally started to see some of the narrative you <clears throat> talked about, which is kind of a interesting thing where there's like two games going on at once. You have the entire home base area where the narrative goes on, and then you have the runs to escape Hades. I, I really, that's really well done. And the fucking narration, the narration is through and through Bastion. Yep. With breaking of the fourth <clears throat> wall. Just really, really fucking nice. I love when games um, break the fourth wall. I'm, I'm a sucker for that. It's done really well too. Um, it's, it's kind of, you, I don't even know if it's technically breaking the fourth wall. It's, it's, it's breaking a barrier similar to that though. The way it interacts. It makes me think a stranger than fiction. Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah. kind of like but, a, uh, a meta commentary almost or a meta plot. Yes. But, uh, it's, it's fun. Um, it's definitely, I feel it's a game where if you take your time, you can get really far because it's, you have like iframes on the dodge and shit like that you can take advantage of, which is really mm -hmm. nice. So it's not always, well, I'm just not strong enough to do it. It's like, no, if you really nail your shit, you can get a lot further than you should be able to get or they want <clears> you to get. 
which I appreciate. Yeah. Less relying on good items and RNG from like a game like yes. Isaac or something. Yes. I mean, there, there, there are things you get from the drops, mm -hmm. but you don't feel them nearly as much as you would in say an Isaac or even a Splunky where like when you get that item, you feel the presence of that item almost instantly. Yeah. Ooh. With Hades, with the small exception of like some ultimate thing you can pick up sometimes, you don't feel it. Um, Which isn't bad. It's just it's not the same vibe. I I would say that there are definitely synergies that happen, but they're not as hardcore as Isaac. And Isaac, the game is what synergy can I build and how fast can I get there? Um, Hades is less prescriptive than that. See, most of what I'm seeing is, well, when you attack someone, they'll take a little damage after. Or when you attack someone, you'll do this debuff on them. And every once in a while, you'll get something where, oh, you do chain lining when you attack. So you might get some synergies where you do chain lightning when you attack and you up your attack speed. Yeah. But I haven't seen like crazy ass synergies, I should say. Like no, no, there's not gonna be the the risk of rain. Let's do this thing which multiplies this thing, which multiplies this other thing that multiplies the first thing, and then you just broke the game. Or like where you have something where you do chain lightning. When people die, they do a lightning bolt that hits people that causes more chain lightning to proc. Yeah, exactly. It's not Path of Exile, it's not Binding of Isaac, it's not Borderlands. Uh, it is balanced. It is God a hack forbid. <laughs> it is a hack and slash. Yes. Like play style, it is absolutely a hack and slash, which is yeah. I wasn't necessarily ready for that. But it's it's really good. Um, I'm digging it. Um, I like the upgrade system that they're doing. I like how you unlock different rooms for your runs. Mm -hmm. so you're buying things that will have a chance of appearing as a room type which is kind of cool hmm. but yeah uh it's a good game i will probably be putting well not probably i will be putting some more time in it for sure when i'm not doing dota because yep i'm i'm still on it still, still chasing still the horse <laughs> sorry no i've been having a lot of a lot of fun uh starting to change up my heroes look for different synergies uh, new patch will be happening soon. So use in the meta and start learning some new characters. So yeah, that's all I got there. You guys got um, anything else game wise? Uh, any Tarkov or anything, Adam? Uh, yeah, I've been playing I... some Tarkov still. Um, I got into the early test server, so I can Ooh. start start helping them develop their game. Um, no, it's just a it's a test environment, so they can start making drastic changes to stuff without affecting the main player base. Um, you know, lots of other games have done this. Right now, they just start everybody off at level 41 with all the traders upgraded and with a bunch of money, and everything is super cheap. So I can just buy whatever I want from the traders and and go to town. Um, nice. Right now, I think they're testing mainly network improvements and stuff like that. Um, I don't know what they're going to be testing in the future. I'm sure they will change things drastically whenever they decide to do so. That's really cool, though. I mean, you're going to be maining over on the um, test server for a bit. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll probably switch back and forth. I don't know. I mean, I still want to play the the regular game. Um, the test server definitely feels like a. I don't actually care about the results of everything as much. Like the stakes are pretty much gone. Um, yeah. But. It, it's a fun. It, it's a, it's out. a good. Yeah, it's it's a fun environment to be able to just unwind and not worry about it. Um, Can so you that, play that it without cool. having that? Um, like Tarkov is very much you need to feel like playing Tarkov to play Tarkov. Mm -hmm. Can you do the test server without that? Does it like kind of let you just enjoy? I think so. I mean, well, right now the test server is drastically less populated than the main servers, so. I mean, you might not run into anybody the whole raid hmm. oh. at all. Um, like Damn. when you when you go to queue for a match, there is usually nobody on the list. <laughs> Damn. All now, right. we did run into players. I mean, I've only <clears throat> played, I think, three test server raids. And 
two out of those three times I we did run into players early on, but there were not there was not a ton of stuff going on. Huh. So it's build really sweet weapons, load into maps, kill scavs. Uh yeah, pretty much. All right. Uh, right now it's kind of frustrating because while they do level up your traders and your everything's cheap and everything, um, you still haven't done the quests. So you can oh. you can buy all the stuff from level four traders, but any items that unlock from doing quests you don't have, and then like you I don't have the, the hideout. Or unlocks. Yeah. Like cer certain ammos, like. Lost. Like, I can't buy the Solewa med kits from Therapist until I do have a few quests. Um, and then, like, building guns. I can't use the preset system at all until I have a workbench from the hideout. So I have to, like, do some stuff and upgrade the hideout before I can use that feature. And so building guns is kind of tedious right now. It's just, oh, like, yeah, really select fun. things you don't have access to that you would normally have access to. But then you also have like a ton of money, and everything that you do have access to is dirt cheap. So it's kind of <laughs> an interesting spot. But but it's still so fun. you just need to run through for a few hours, get the yeah, workbench, run, get run through some of the early quests, get things set up a little bit. But like once you get to the M4 at that point, I mean, I know it's not the meta, it's meta ist of meta guns, but that's a really good gun to have to build yeah. off of its platform. Yeah. Yeah, you can. I mean, I have level four traders. You can do all the M4 stuff pretty much. I thought the base M4 was locked to a quest item. No. Oh, I, you, I think you get one mind. as a quest reward, but you you can once you oh, level up your okay. traders to a certain point, you can just buy them outright. Okay. Good deal. Yeah. Other than that, um, I haven't played like, anything. <laughs> sounds like Tom was trying to get in there on something he's played recently. No, I, I literally oh. have only played Cyberpunk. That's oh, okay. it. Oh. Yeah. In that case, I um I got into an OG uh, strategy game a little bit. So, um yeah, I started playing a little bit of chess today. Oh, it's been a while uh, since I've done chess. that. So, yeah. Um, did, they, did they fix the meta or is it still really queen heavy? <laughs> um, it's really queen heavy until you get up to the higher ranks, and then they know how to fully utilize other pieces. Okay. I mean, the game. I mean, the game hasn't been patched since what, like the fifties? Yeah, yeah. I think I think the fifties is. Probably <laughs> you mean like that. fifty, like AD, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like okay, okay. G fifty. It's like zero zero fifty. Weren't there actually changes to chess like within the last hundred years though? There may uh, have been like, like competitive couple. rules, but not actual yeah. play rules. Really? In terms of like scoring and placement and stuff like that, yeah, but not not anything related to core gameplay. Core gameplay has been static since. I thought like castling was added later on or something. Maybe. I don't know. I'm gonna have to look that up. Um, and Slugger, yes, I know he has. He's actually who I was playing with. Uh he was. Because uh, I know he was relatively new, and I used to play a lot of chess. I'm not good by any stretch of the imagination, but I used to play a lot, so and I enjoy it. So I picked it back up. Playing on Chess.com, uh, they allow correspondence and stuff. I know last not, time we did this, we did Lee Chess, but yeah, not LeeChess.org, the world's most premier open source chess website. Dude, Chess.com, 100 free. Well, it's so much prettier. It's a nice user interface. <laughs> Lead chess, it got the job done. It it looked like uh, it looked like it was built in the nineties. Let's be honest. Yeah, it kind of did. I but completely disagree. Looks like it was built in the two thousands. Nineties is a totally different aesthetic. Two thousand or two thousand one, maybe. <laughs> I would say two thousand six. Okay. Oh, uh, we, we Lee, talking shit about lead chess against the people. Um. Worked up in chat by people. I mean, yeah, agreed, perfect. agreed. Lee Chess allow like it will coach you on previous games. It will show you how to improve what you are already doing. Yeah, Lee Chess and, has uh, a lot of nice features. Yeah, I don't. I, mean, I don't think it's really com has that too. Chess.com is bullshit. Does Chess.com also have the um, not real time games? Yes, correspondence chess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that I think that's, that's a huge. must mm -hmm. for any kind of digital chess. Yeah. 
<clears throat> I love correspondence chess. I really do. For those of you I... not in the know, correspondence chess back in the day used to be played through the mail. You would actually play a game sending letters and be like, hello, how's the family? Did you hear about this bloody war? Oh, by the way, I've moved my queen to D6. <laughs> um, <laughs> like you literally would set up a chessboard and keep letters and stuff like that. Now it's just, hey, Eric got a notification. It's his turn to move. Oh, hey, Tom got a notification. It's his turn to move. Uh, so now we don't have to wait for like the Pony Express to come by with the, the latest chess moves. Uh, instead, we can use this World Wide Web thing that's so hot. I don't like correspondence chess. Right. right. It, because when you're thinking like three, four moves ahead, and then you put the game down for a day and a half, then you come back up and you're having where, to rethink where everything you just where broke down. I? It's obnoxious. Now I get that you know, sometimes you have to. Fuck off, Tom. But <laughs> call correspondence chess, put it in your letter. I would much rather play a real time game, sit down, let's go. Any day of the week. This bloody war. <laughs> God damn it, Tom. But um, that, that's the extent of the games I've been doing. <laughs> Can you imagine dudes back then? They have like a chess room with like 30 boards set up. <laughs> Just like mailing all these people all the time. <laughs> So uh, we used to have a chess club at Bradford, small school, everything. But the dude that would run it was really good. And he would sit in the middle and have like eight or nine chess boards around him playing eight or nine games at once. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a simul or simul. And he would just wreck people. Lee Chess has that feature, by the way. Just letting you know. Uh, <laughs> Speaking so of all this chess, have any of you guys watched that Queen's Gambit show on Netflix? Yes, I haven't finished it, it, but I really it like it so far. Yeah. Okay. I thought about maybe starting I'm it. I'm enjoying it. I wanted to hear if you guys had, had seen it and if it was any good or not. I am it feels like a, a time capsule of the 60s, 70s. It's how far I've gotten so far. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. But also, it's, Tom, it's not really breaking bad, it. but it's good. Since we've had this conversation, I've had a friend reach out saying, oh, we should play chess, followed up by, oh, never mind, you're hating on Lee Chess. So <laughs> fuck you guys, please support for Lee Chess. You know, gonna look, it's 2020, the console wars are out, there's no Sega versus Nintendo, Microsoft versus Sony, fuck all that. This is chess.com versus leechess.org, Lee Chess homies represent. It's open God, source, respect. bitch, what are you going to do? I wish I could mute you. I so wish I could mute you. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we just wrapped up a game. I think this is a pretty good spot to do what we need to do next. Yeah, would I think you it agree? Is. Yes. I guess. So uh, at this point, Slugger, we're gonna have to say adios to you. Actually, you were bouncing out anyway. That works. Um. So, this is the time of the month where we look back over what we were given last month in clips, and we say, you know what? Here's the best top ten things this community did last month. So big announcement though for those who missed. Um, give your game formerly supported Rocket League, um, League of Legends, PUBG, and a couple other games on betas. Now we'll do a shadow play recording that is impactless on your system, relatively impactless. So you can clip any game you want. It does a 15 second clip, upload it to them, and they'll give you the link to share. Any game you want, we have CSGO thanks to Give Your Game. So, get on it, people. Start adding more stuff. Yeah. And Adam, I'll let you take over at this point since I don't know where you are on controls. Oh, I'm good. I'm ready to go. Hit that beautiful play button. Well, here we go. And here we got Rob in here at the 10 spot. With a, with a nice little redirect there. It was a good pass. Got a really, really, really nice angle on this hit. Real purdy like. Ooh. Very nice. Dobby, number nine. Hold on. I, I had Dobby in this? Oh. Dobby. Oh, yeah. Look that at that read. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Speaking about being dirty. four moves ahead. <laughs> this is when you uh, spam calculated. <laughs> 
D Town Boogie. Boogie in here. All right. Oh my god. Off the ceiling. What? You know, when With you're the on flip. the ceiling, you might as well do it. <laughs> I love when the ceiling shots just kind of happen. Yeah. It's no, like it's definitely that's not. not that's not kind of happened. That was three and a half <laughs> hits to set that up. <laughs> I love this. Jordan Giraffe and oh, right back to her. My God. What's up? I'm still here. It's like, oh, are you trying to clear that? Nah, dog. I got you. <laughs> so, what a, pa a pass. What a pass. And it's great because, like, she boosts back to it. Totally planned by her once they hit that ball. <laughs> Catherine. Speaking of pass. Oh, that was a nice little touch. Heard you getting a little twisty on a pass. Love seeing it. It's a little twizzler in there. A little, little, little spin there. Damn. It's clean. Only person I know running the Polar Dom X. GT, by the way. Yeah. Polar. Oh, oh, oh no. Okay. <laughs> I love those early flips where you hit it at the end of the flip. Those are so cool. Yeah. Using that flip to get that extra range. It's like, yep. I know I got to get over. Boom. Ah, it's Very hurt. nicely done. Hey, it's time. Hey, hey, we know this dude. Hey, remember it's we were just me. talking about give your game and, and CSGO. Oh, two. You know, you got the kills. Oh, but the holy pistol. Shit, you put a lot of bullets <laughs> out there. <laughs> the, the one really nice moment of this, though, is choosing for one choosing to use a pistol because it's quicker and then using that little sidewall as cover and then jumping out of the cover into him so that he missed his it's, shots it's that was bullshit. really nice it was just bullshit but you got the kills it. and you won the match oh so. man you Ooh. just fake that oh my dude that God. hell fake and then the bump Ty, oh, they, no, sir, I'm picking that down. he has a family <laughs> uh, Shaq. Shaq. killing it on Valorant again this man like this is getting regular he's just waiting on him he knows where he is he's just he's just better yeah he also, really is just better wait, wow. wait. watch this last kill this must have been something they knew they added to valorant like just watch what happens after he kills that last person like that dragon <laughs> shit like that that's kind of cool that's yeah. pretty cool kx speaking of cool Oh, he's getting real twisty with it. Whoa, Gets that reset. Very nice. <laughs> Gets the reset. Jesus. He's just stunting. That's what that is. That's just stunting. Yeah. It's making kids look bad. <laughs> real bad. All right. All right. So, just a little PSA. Everyone, anyone can be a part of this. Get all the clips you can from Gift Your Game. Go to the 72 PC Discord and drop those suckers in plays of the day. Every replay put in there will be reviewed. Every one of them. So put them in there. And if they're just funny and bad, put them in there. Um, I've been awful lately. I've been taking a little break, but I will be getting those back up on Twitter. Sorry, everyone. But yes, um, congrats there to KX. That was a great, great fucking play. And also, one last PSA. Hit save on your clips, ladies and gentlemen. We have way too many clips come in where people aren't saving them. But if you yeah. don't save them, we can't use them, unfortunately. And if we can't use them, it's not free content for us. So help us with free content. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> if you could, it'd be do great. our work for us. I mean that that's how I like to do things. Yeah. But, pretty much. Um, let's move on to the news front. Yes. And um I mean, guess I see what, cyberpunk. guys? We're going back to Cyberpunk. Whoa. Start off. Yep. I don't know what this is. All right. So um, there is a feature called a brain dance. It's a, it's a little mechanic in Cyberpunk 2077, and you will encounter it early on as part of a story mission. We're not getting into spoilers. I just feel like I need to tell you how this leads up. Your character is given a headset that they put on. At that point, if you are an epileptic, Turn off the screen, look away, do whatever you have to do. Don't fucking watch this thing. Uh, because apparently it can trigger epileptic seizures. Um, which, 
a lot of games do and have issues with a lot of games, including Cyberpunk 2077, when you first started up, has now um, this warning that says if you have epilepsy, this game can trigger some really negative, harmful medical effects in your body. Um, so the reason that people are kind of pissed, myself included, is because to build the brain dance model, to build this thing, um, in the game, they took a look at medical devices used to invoke epileptic seizures, modeled it and animated it very accurately within the game, and then went, ha, huh. oh shit, this device in real life that's used to trigger epileptic seizures can trigger epileptic seizures. Wow, who would have fucking thought? This is amazing, what a concept. Uh, so yeah. CDPR, guys, what the fuck? So There's they no modeled it to turn this off. They modeled a device that is designed to create epileptic seizures, like to the point where it performs the same way in the game. Yes. Dear God. Yeah. Like, okay, these guys are smart guys. They have an oversight. They make good <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. Like, oversight is one thing. This isn't oversight. This gets into, like, malicious incompetence. I, I love CDPR. They're one of my favorite developers. But fucking Christ. This, this is unconscionable. Uh, it's, it's fucking disgusting is what it is. Uh, so yeah, CDPR did put out a statement. They said, hey, um, we did have like a warning in the EULA. It's like, guys, read the room. Nobody reads the EULA. And B, you know you fucked up. Uh, they did say that they are working on um, ASAP. They are working on features to either decrease uh, the amount of seizureiness of this particular animation um, or even just give an option to turn off these moments altogether, uh, which frankly should have been in the game um, Dude, hiding behind a eula is the biggest piece of shit move you can do yeah it is it <laughs> acts a fucking is um, like if there's like ep there's typically like epileptic warnings like they're not in the eula they're like legit like hey yeah. this could cause yeah i mean now, most games now. have that warning at the beginning yeah there is that now um but yeah. the fact that you build an object, an animation set, and model, and lighting tech into your game after a medical device used to invoke seizures, and then not tell people that, hey, we're going to use a medical device to invoke your seizures, seems uh, unethical. Can, can I say that? It, it seems unethical, right? Um, I, I don't. Uh, I want to call it ethical, because it's... Ethical would imply that they're intentionally trying to make people for sure <laughs> incompetent. Yes, I, I would. I would like it. Incompetent is like, hey, your quest givers spawn on top of a roof, and nobody plays your shitty online Fallout game. This goes beyond incompetent, though, because it's incompetence with actual medical negligence. I, I yes, but that doesn't make it works. immoral. That doesn't make it immoral, though. That's true. I guess. I guess the morality includes the intent not just the negligible like, incompetence. Like this, this could be is. a situation where they thought, you know what, if it's behind a screen and they're not there in person, it won't have an impact. If, I'm if not, you're a I'm, professional I'm, I'm, game developer and you don't understand <laughs> that epilepsy is a thing, then go fuck yourself. It's not, th there could be a difference between seeing something behind a screen and seeing something in person. <laughs> but I, I'm not trying to say like, this is a good excuse. I'm just saying yeah. I can see someone <laughs> yeah. saying this. Uh, I could see them saying it, but that's, mm, man. So they are working on it. Maybe, maybe like, it's like general bugginess is one thing, but this is, this could really hurt somebody. Kill? Like, seriously, I think it's the word you're looking this for. Could, this could really kill somebody. There's, uh, this is law bait or law bait. This is lawsuit bait is what this is. It is. Um, and I'm, I would be surprised I, if they don't get sued. Yeah. I frankly, like if, if somebody sued CDPR, I could not blame them. Like this is something that they should be responsible for. So yeah, 
that was that was a thing. All right. Uh, uh, also, more cyberpunk news. Um, CDPR's uh, bonuses were based on Metacritic scores. A lot of devs do this. Um, at generally, people don't like this. Um, feels a little arbitrary to me, but that's fine. Uh, instead, they said, hey, because the game is so fucking buggy, we're, uh, we're, we're not going to tie your bonus to, uh, to Metacritic scores. So don't worry about it. Instead, they're going to tie it to uh, CDPR tokens, which the company <laughs> gives out for anyone who goes above and beyond by working extra hours. So it's overtime pay. It's overtime pay. It's not a bonus. It's overtime pay. Um, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sure. Yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> that was kind of... <laughs> Sure. I, you're never going to hear me I be mean, someone say everyone should get bonuses, but at least yeah. this way they're getting overtime pay without getting overtime pay. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I mean, I'm glad that they're not tying it to the Metacritic score of the game. I yeah. mean, that's a shitty I mean, mechanic I feel that dev houses do mm -hmm. to try to help their scores because they'll know that it can, that could impact the Raiders rating. And then the idea that one... if I rate this lower, I'm cutting people's money. Oh God, no! That that is such a broken fucking incentive. <laughs> hey, journalists, let's tie people's fucking livelihoods to what you write about this goddamn video game. It's like no fucking thank you. That is perverse in like a Night City cyberpunk <laughs> evil capitalism kind of way. That's how Bubsy 3D gets a ten out of ten. <laughs> oh my God. That's right. I brought it up. Oh, man. It was my turn. That is still the worst soundtrack I've ever heard in my entire life. I, it's kind of impressive. It's like they tried to make it as annoying as possible <laughs> intentionally. But, uh, yeah. okay. So, yeah. um, coming soon to uh, Xbox Game Pass, the Game Awards, the Elder Scrolls. Um, I can't see the rest of it, Tom. You put it there. What is it? Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I, I've got... Don't worry. Uh... Skyrim, <laughs> Among Us, and more uh, is coming to Game Pass. Now, I know that Among Us is paid on PC, so but it's free on phone, so whatever. It, Among Us, it's hot. It's on Game Pass. It has a new level soon. coming. We didn't put this yeah. in the news, but they uh, oh, teased yeah. a new level. Oh, cool. It, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, it does. I actually kind of want to play some Among Us. I haven't played it in a while. It's a good game to get into every once in a while. Yeah. I feel like I get... I don't want to say bored of it, but it gets annoying really quickly to me. Yeah, yeah. I just every game is just screaming at each other. That's it. That's the whole game. <laughs> it's all about who you're game. with. It's all just For a big. Certain... It's always sunny in Philadelphia episode. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Tom's, Tom's family at Thanksgiving. The game. <laughs> <laughs> who killed Uncle Fred? Well, I don't know, but Aunt Marge is looking a little sus. <laughs> I hate that word. Sus. I hate. It's I hate sus. that that's you're, gotten you're... so popular. <laughs> I don't mind sus. I don't know. Eric's er, feeling pretty sus. I like sus Maybe a lot more than know. poggers. <laughs> Can I just hate them both? No, you have to love one. <laughs> or is that making me too much of a boomer? Yep. No, I mean, you, um, you are. Go, but... go and play your boomer shooters, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of boomer shooters, well, not really, but uh, there is a throwback. Mm -hmm. Um, also at the game awards, there was back for blood was announced, which I call a spiritual successor. Tom calls a clone. It's the unofficial left for dead three. Yes. It is made by the original developers. Turtle um, Rock Studios in the house. They were bought by or brought into valve, made the games left valve. And now they're making this game. Turtle Rock it Studios is, also created the first version of counter-strike global offensive that valve then took over and made their own. So um, they've got rest. this game. This game is such a Left 4 Dead knockoff that there is literally something in here that the only way to describe it is it's a boomer. It yeah. vomited on people and exploded when shot. It is a boomer. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I, I'm pretty excited though because I really, really enjoyed Left 4 Dead. Dead, and I Left really for enjoyed Dad. the TV. Left, Left for, for Dad. Dad. Oh, I'd play God. that. It's a dad going around a house with his laundry list of things to do. Left for dad. 
It's just like, well, I've got to change. It ends up being that scene from, um, fuck, what's the name of that show? Um, what? God damn, I blank on everything. The main guy in Breaking Bad. Brian Cranston? Brian Cranston. Malcolm in the middle. Malcolm in the middle. Yeah, Malcolm in the middle. He's changing the light bulb, and then it leads to, like, him fixing the car's engine. Like, he's got the whole thing up on blocks. Left I thought I asked dad. you to change the light bulb. Uh, can't you see? That's what I'm doing. Oh, no. Oh, uh, that shell. Yeah. But no, um, I'm, I'm really excited <laughs> about this. I got into the PvP mode of this because I love playing as the zombies. Yeah. I thought that was actually a really enjoyable thing to do. I never got into two as much as one. One, I put a fuck ton of time into. I we, put a uh, decent amount into two, but... We might have to have to pick this up and play it, because I've been feeling some Left for Dead. Oh, we, we absolutely... When this launches, I will get this as soon as it launches. And this is absolutely one of those games where get your friends. This yeah. game can yeah, be played you don't alone. Play that solo. This, <laughs> is, this is a game made to play with people. It's like playing NFL Blitz alone. You just don't do it. Talk for yourself. <laughs> Blitz and NBA Jam are perfect games. They can be played alone, with a party, drunk, sober, doesn't matter. They're great. <laughs> Get out of here with that trash, Tom. Oh, I'm making hot takes left and right. Ah, speaking of takes, I don't have any. Uh, you guys have anything else you want to get out of here? Um, it has been a dearth <laughs> week of news because of Cyberpunk, and that's the only thing I have to talk about. Uh, yeah. Adam, did you have something? No, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of just ready to play play some more Cyberpunk. God damn it, you guys are fucking yeah. fiends. It looks too good. Um, it just looks too good. It looks it, like those it, photo. You know those photo realistic oh. mods that they did for uh, like GTA 4 that nobody could run. Yeah. It looks like that always and yeah, it, it runs great <laughs> i'm i'm gonna give one actual legit psa if you are a parent with a child who is begging for cyberpunk 2077 this isn't just ooh ha look it's grand theft auto vice city like when they say mature it's fucking oh mature. yeah oh it's yeah it's filled to the brim with death dismemberment extreme vi violence body horror uh um, lots sexual lots content of nudity, yeah just straight up sex everywhere like eh, fucking everywhere like you I can't stream this game on Twitch without turning on censorship mode kind of everywhere. Uh, so yeah, don't buy it for your 10 year olds. <laughs> Unless you probably shouldn't have anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that said, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the podcast. So, yep. um, we have a YouTube, uh, 72 PC dot or not dot com to your God, 72 pin connector. Uh, over there, you'll find the top play montage, which you're about to see again, as well as other podcast clips, the podcast itself. Just good times, all sorts of shit over there. If you're watching this over there, thank you. But we are live every Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time. You can come to the Twitch chat, which is twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector. Jump in the chat, ask questions, be part of the conversation, or even better yet, snipe our lobby on Rocket League and be part of the game with us. Also, we have a Twitter, which is 72PC underscore official. Uh, we have all sorts of different bullshit we put up there, so just follow that. It's been kind of dead lately because I've been a lazy ass, but I'm going to fix that, I promise. <laughs> and then um, finally, we have a website, 72PickConnector.com. It has everything you need, our media, our merch store, our Discord links, everything you would want. So go there, has everything for you. And now our JavaScript and CSS has sub resource integrity enabled. Yay! Front yeah. end development, shit, which I absolutely hate. Anyway, a uh, quick shout out um, to uh, Ko Ken Luke and I'm Steezy for following during the cast. Uh, we try to call those out at the end of the cast when I can, and we played some games yeah. with them. So good games too. Yeah, GGs. good dude. Um, and also speaking of games, um, RLCS Winter Regional Two is going on this weekend. The boys made it into the show. Uh, got knocked out first rant or knocked to the lower bracket first game by um, fuck I can't oh uh, Jamal Jabari or JJ as I like to say because I can never say their name right. Uh, in the lower bracket they won their first series, dropped the second one to the Sonics. So it was hard fought. Got some points. You guys did good. Keep your head up into the third split. Yes. Or third regional. And all that said, I think that's all we got for you. So um. I think we're yep. going to get you all out of here with another top place. Yeah. Let's, uh, you ready for that footage, Adam? Yeah, let's roll that footage again. Yeah. See you, everybody. Oh.
See you. Bye.